today's gospel passage. Jesus says, I do not judge anyone who hears my words. I do not judge anyone who hears my words and does not keep them. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my word has a judge. On the last day, the word that I have spoken will serve as a judge. The word that I have spoken will serve as a judge. A gospel, um, um, an episode that uh, not many women actually have have liked a verse from the scriptures in Ephesians chapter 5, verse, verse 22. And there have been many women who have, uh, who have told me very bluntly they find it very difficult to digest it. Is Ephesians 5, 22. Wives, be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord. Now, not many wives actually uh, like this verse. I remember we were... Um, a priest was at the Eucharist, and this happened to one of our priests. He was at the Eucharist celebrating the Mass, and the reading of the day was Ephesians 5, 21 onwards, Wives, be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord. And the woman who was doing the reading read the first part and said, Wives, be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord. And immediately, standing there, she said, Though I do not agree to this, and then she continued the rest. Well, not many, not many wives would actually find this very comfortable. But this verse actually has to be taken in context. And if you actually take it in the context of what's coming after it as well, I think it's the husbands who would be more terrified of this verse than the, than the wives. And you have to take the whole of Ephesians in a context. And, and today is not the day. But if you take the whole of Ephesians in a context, you'll actually understand what this verse actually means and what it's calling us to do. But what I meant to say is sometimes we read the scriptures and, and we can be very picky about it. You know, what, what makes me feel comfortable? What makes me feel okay about it? And, and, and certain things are fine. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Certain things I just push off. And this is where we've got to understand that God's word is Jesus having spoken God's word. And that is what the Lord says. I speak what the Father asked me to speak. And then it doesn't end there. This is what Jesus says in, in John 14, verse 26. The advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and he will remind you of all that I have spoken. So the Spirit will remind us of what the Lord has spoken and what the Lord has spoken is what the Father has spoken. And so the Trinity working in tandem over here, bringing out and giving us the Word. And that Word is meant for us to embrace. The Word is meant for us to digest, even if it might be at certain times a very bitter pill for us, something that we might not be able to comprehend at that moment. But it is God's word. We all people who would love to hear God's voice speak to us and tell us what to do. And this is the gift that the Lord has given us, his word. And he says, my word is with you. And you embrace my word. You love my word. You accept my word and you live my word. Because when you do that, you are living what the Father has spoken and you're responding to what the Spirit is reminding you. And this is why the word is said in Psalm 119, Psalm 119, 105. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now we would love to hear God speaking to us. We would love to hear God giving us directions and the paths that we are supposed to take every day. In the scriptures, every day when the scriptures are opened out to us during the Eucharist, we should be like the Emmaus disciples who say, when the scripture was opened out to us, not only in the homely. And, and so it doesn't have to be that you have an amazing priest who, 
who gives an amazing homily or an amazing talk. You don't need that. The scripture works in itself every time in the Eucharist when the scripture is opened out to us. Through the first reading, through the psalm, through the gospel, or the homily, when the scripture is opened out to us, it is God speaking to us, his word, and the spirit reminding us on that day what we need. And that will be the lamp to my feet and the light to my path. And, and that is a completion of Psalm 23, verse 4. Even, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Why? Because his rod and his staff, his word is there to comfort me. So when I walk through the valley of darkness, and I do not know which way to take and how to get through the valley of darkness, the scripture tells us his word will be a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So it's important that we become one with God's word. The Lord says, I do not judge you, but the words I have spoken, and I have spoken it, those words might end up judging you. So I need to hold on to the word. I need to know what God's word tells me. I need to know what the scripture tells me. Sadly, in our, in our Catholic circles, this is one, one part of our, of our Christian faith that kind of ends up being, being pushed underneath. We read books about spirituality. We, we know our novenas and, and we know our prayers. But when it comes to the scripture, some way or the other, we find an excuse that I'm not able to understand it. Maybe we don't understand and we don't comprehend and we are not able to understand in totality at that moment what the Lord is speaking. But it is God's word that is written that is being reminded to us by the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit is working in tandem with the Word and then enlightening us, making that Word as a lamp to our feet and a guide to our path to get us through the valley of darkness. So embrace it every day, to be able to even in, in small little portions, but every day to find some consolation, some comfort and some direction from God's word. For the Lord said, my word has been spoken. And we should be able to embrace that word. That is when we will walk through the valley of our darknesses, but through the light of the word. Let's close eyes for a moment. Lord, we thank you that you have given us your word. That word will judge us, be it for the good or for the bad. And unless and until I know what your word is, we'll always live in darkness. So Lord, let me never be afraid of your word. Let me not be afraid that I will not understand or I will not be able to digest. So I pray, Lord, send your spirit, who you promised, will enlighten me and will enlighten the word. Let your spirit remind me of what you have spoken, the word of the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.